Hey guys, I think we're live. Is someone talking? Joey, what is going on? Joey, <laughs> dang, it's all back together. We're all back together. Wow. <laughs> It's 2023, and the new kids on the block are back on the stream. It's We're been here. a while, guys. It's 23. Wow. Okay. How's everybody doing? Wake me up before you go, go. <laughs> Has anyone written an autograph and put 22? Or nope. signed a check and or, put yeah. 22 yes. or anything? I've done that. Yes, Has anyone goofed up and not adjusted the year? Me. In, in their hand? Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone else use what tour the new kids on the block were on to remember what year it was? Yep. Me all the time. Oh, hundred yeah, yeah, yeah. percent. I do it to figure out how old my children are. A hundred all day long. It's like I like 2012. Where were we? All day long. There's a blockhead who who, who who knows her kids were born at right. certain dates too. I was uh I was talking to Tara about when I graduated from high school and I couldn't remember I know we were performing and I flew in for the graduation and I knew there were some fans like there was a little bit of like screaming fans and stuff at the graduation but I sometimes get my mind confused between Danny's graduation and when I graduated which were different years so to find out when I graduated I looked at the where our songs were on the charts and I'll be loving you was probably it was released like in April of or May of 1988 so some that was the year I, I based it in other words I graduated when I'll be loving you was probably in the top 10 on the billboard charts I don't know the exact wow. I know I'll be loving was you that early I thought that was I thought it was no, 89 later. 89 wow. that was 89 yeah 89, 89 89 right 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 yeah yeah it was it was 88 we did the tiffany tour please don't go girl was out right stuff came out and then early in 89 i'll be loving you came out and i graduated but i couldn't believe i graduated in 89 in my mind it was always like i graduated in 88 but there really wouldn't have been any we weren't Unfair. nobody knew who we were in 88 and there was some fanfare at the graduation so i'll be loving you was the way that i knew that i graduated in 89. 89. Crazy. I remember crazy. my prom and Donnie was there too. I was. You remember that? Yep. <laughs> I went to your prom. Mm -hmm. I remember your prom better than my own prom. And I wasn't supposed yeah. to go to my prom because I didn't graduate. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the worst days of my life watching Danny and Elliot Jackson and Joe Kel, uh, not Joe Kelsey, but David Thompson, all our friends walk across the stage without me. <laughs> Got there eventually, but it was, it was tough to watch them go. Well, speaking of dates, <clears throat> 2023 is, is a pretty important year in, in all things new kids because um, we're here on this on this stream kicking off an amazing look back to which was the mixtape tour 2022 which we'll get to in a second but as i know everybody knows and i'm sure everyone out in block nation knows 2023 once we get to april represents 15 years since you guys have been back together april 4th 2023 pretty amazing yeah when you guys uh stood on the today show courtyard and dropped that curtain and, and everything changed for the better we all got got in back in everyone's lives and saw the fans again. So I think that the this curtain. is an, yeah, it was a great, <laughs> everyone, that was an interesting moment. I, I've definitely will go back and watch it a lot recently, but yeah, I, can you believe it? We're coming up on the 15 year anniversary of, of the return of the block. And uh, we have a big year planned um, of lots of ways to celebrate this, this, these milestones with the fans. Um, and, you know, we are, we're, this is really the first thing, which is that we have this amazing, live concert film today and behind the scenes documentary that is about to premiere, which is a look back on what was an amazing tour in 2022. Obviously a tour that we, you know, when we started streaming a long time ago, a couple years back, we obviously were doing it for different purposes to stay in everyone's lives and stay connected with each other. But this tour really represents our ability to get back out on the road. And uh, it was, uh, it was an amazing, amazing time. So I know we're really excited to share this film with everybody. Are you guys maybe able to share with me and the fans 
one special memory you have? If you had to pick maybe your favorite memory of something that happened last summer on the mixtape tour, 2022, it'd be amazing to, to hear it. Hmm. Danny, how, how about you? Can you share with us? I mean, if you, I know well, it's hard to pick, I know it's hard to pick on one. I mean, 57, nah. 57 amazing shows and a, and a lot of, a lot of time to prep it, but is there something, if you had to pick uh, maybe something that sticks out to you? Um, over, over the years of living here in Miami, I've, it developed some great friendships here. So the, the show here in Fort Lauderdale, a bunch of my friends came and they, you know, some of my friends are pretty, um, they write to the point, they're blunt. They just tell you, <laughs> you know, how it is. And when I went backstage to see them after, I mean, their reaction to the, to the show they just saw a couple of my friends and they go to a lot of concerts, a lot of the Latin concerts here and a lot of great artists. They were like, it's the best show we've ever seen, ever. So for me, seeing the reaction of my friends, um, you know, whose opinions I've, I value for sure was a, a great memory for me. But, you know, I had great memories every night. My dad and, you know, daughters were out there and family and sharing it with my dad every night was pretty special too. That's awesome. John, can you share something with us? I knew you were going to come to me next. I mean, uh, you know, not there was nothing really particular. It's just always so good to to be back on the road. I mean, I know COVID was a big issue. And then, you know, in the beginning, we were all like, is COVID going to shut us down this time? Um, but we, we did it. And I, I think that was just the biggest memory for me was just, meeting people all over again, you know, after not seeing everybody for so long. That's it. Thank you. Joe, how about you? How about, how about a special memory from the mixtape tour? Mm. Um, you know, the, the, the walk to the meet and greet is, is coming to mind, actually. You know, sort of, you know, the, the everydayness of it is, uh, of being on tour is, is a gift and you know of course it's a grind you know it really was you know a grind for a lot of reasons but it's the beautiful grind so you know just that walk that we get together at around 4 30 or 5 and gather up again and talking about something silly or stupid and then then you know the day slowly starts and we meet we meet all the blockheads and the diehards and um yeah it's 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 a beautiful it's a beautiful thing to you know all the reasons you go out on the road you know we're so grateful to be able to do it donnie uh can you share something with us yeah so many so many memories to choose from um there's kind of bookends for me i think the last night um you know, the last night in DC was very special. Um, you know, Joey, Joey's speech was very special um, to close the tour. But I think the opening of the tour, for me, the first night in Cincinnati is really the, the moment for me. And one specific moment is when we finished um, the old right stuff and stopped and just waited to see what the audience did um you know it wasn't really planned that we were going to stop and pause every night for a few minutes and just let the audience roar because you don't know if they're going to roar you don't know what they're going to do um and it was still actually undecided if we were going to pick up and do a little bit more of the old right stuff or go on to the next song which was the whisper and shout um and in Cincinnati that night, I think it had been so long since we were all together and it was the first time so many of us were back performing and, and, you know, there's so many unknowns, as John said, and uncertainties. And when we finished performing the right stuff, the, the audience was deafening and we just reacted to it. I mean, we all started crying. We were hugging. Um, the audience was crying and it was it was the first moment we paused in the show and it was just so emotional for everyone that it really, it decided what the show was gonna be for the rest of the tour. Um, it decided what we were gonna do next in that moment. Um, 
in terms of song and song choice, but it also decided that we really needed to take that breath with everyone every night. It was a really, really special moment. Um, like legit, everyone was crying. Um, and, and we were all in tears blubbering on stage. Was, that was probably the moment. And everything else from then on was just like a cherry on top. It was a wonderful, I loved every moment of the tour. It was magical. Being with the guys every day was magical. But that moment was really the moment was like, oh my God, we're back in the fans as always, are going to make this more special than we could ever imagine. That's amazing. Jordan, are you able to round it out for us here? Sure, Jared. <laughs> um, I don't know. The, 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 the most memorable moment is it's so hard. Like, there's so many moments. And sometimes it's a blur. And sometimes you have to really think about, like, to pick out the moments, but uh, I don't know. I think just just being out there every night after what everyone went through with COVID and to be back on the road, to be back in front of all the fans, like it's like you kind of forget, you know, how electrifying it is, how awesome it is, how great it is to be out there with everybody, making everybody smile. So it was kind of like, wow, you know, it's kind of like just so refreshing to be back out on the road. Um, I always like, I, well, in the show, one of my favorite moments was like in the, um, the part where we're on the catwalk and, and John does his move and leads us all up the catwalk. I don't know if anyone on, knows. On remix. <laughs> on remix. On remix. Yeah. yeah. Well, I always look forward to that and. Uh, do that and then looking around and seeing everyone smile and everyone kind of follow his lead that was one of my favorite parts um um and i think for me too it's like just uh afterwards after the show winding down being backstage with the guys in uh basically having a feast <laughs> we order a lot of food <laughs> And uh, we just sit around and talk, I talk whatever whatever comes to mind, and and eat, and that's just um, a special moment that I always look forward to. Mm -hmm. The feast, you know what I mean? That's a the feast, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there's definitely a lot of camaraderie out on the road, and a lot of these special moments the guys uh, kind of uh, they repeat every night, and it's 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 fun to watch. Um, I mean, one of the most exciting things about the opportunity that was presented to us by being able to show everyone, you know, the, this amazing Philadelphia concert from, you know, from the tour is something that you guys have actually never done before, which is in addition to this, you know, full concert that everyone can watch today. Um, there's also a documentary that comes along with it if you if you purchase the show and what started off as a little bit of bonus content, which was the original idea, really took this amazing form in a, in a nearly 30 minute documentary that chronicles this process. And I think what people um, get to see through this is this creative process that the new kids go to uh, get, get into to put their performance together, but also, of course, what is so unique uh, about the idea of a mixtape tour now this being the second that of, of course mm -hmm. everybody knows that it's it's interwoven and it's one giant amazing show I, I remember us all talking about you know on, on in 2019 you know what if in rehearsals it just doesn't work out and uh mm -hmm. and you know of course Donnie you know being the creative you know director he really uh, you know we went on a journey that involved a lot a lot of trust so I think it's so exciting that this documentary exists and maybe Donnie, you spent a lot of time uh, working with the band on putting this together. Maybe could you just tell us a little bit about the documentary and as a little bit of what people are going to get to see? Um, sure. It, it Well, it wasn't planned. That's for sure. Um, it When we decided to do this um, broadcast of the concert, we thought it'd be great to have some extra stuff for the blockheads to, to watch and stuff. And so many are asking so often, like, can they see some behind the scenes of what it's like mm -hmm. putting the show together? And a lot of them were asking that, in fact, on the New Kids mm -hmm. app, we did a stream on there. And, um, you know, it, it, it just really 
we took whatever resources we had, a lot of iPhone clips. I was calling guys in the band for iPhone clips of whatever um, rehearsal stuff they had, pictures, um, interviews. Um, it just, I guess it just really, it's just given the blockheads what they want, which is kind of what we do. What we've always done is, you know, give them what they want. Um, you know, they're, they're the sixth member of the band. And if they say, show us behind the scenes, we show it. But I think in terms of what it actually is, it's very in depth. I mean, you can never really capture it in a 30 minute documentary. And it's, there's so many different perspectives that mm. we would love to add to that maybe in the future, because, you know, all the guys have their own journey through the process, but in terms of putting the show together, it's really just, you know, we're all a, 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 an encyclopedia of history and moments and, and ideas. And, you know, between us, things we've done in the past, things we think about in the future, um, fan input, you know, it just, my role, you know, in whatever that is in creating the show, it's really just being an encyclopedia and a puzzle put her together, you know, um, and just kind of putting all the pieces together of what will be the special journey for our fans. It's really at the end of the day. And and in this case on mixtape, the other artists fans, you know, SMP's fans, Rick's fans and Vogue's fans, you know, they, they come to the shows too. So it's really just trying to create best of memories and moments that really allow everyone to go on a journey. Like they're actually listening to a mixtape and what all those various emotional mm -hmm feelings you get on a mixtape um but in truth it's just managing a bunch of brilliant ideas that so many people have and bring to the table and putting it together in a cohesive way mm -hmm. i always think it's going to work so i don't i thought nkotbsb could work as a mashed up show i knew the mixtape could work as a mashed up show i just it just takes a lot of work to get it done but you know when everyone's willing and on the same page it's really mm -hmm. nothing that we can't accomplish together that's that's awesome. I'm just so excited for people to get a chance to relive this show, but also to get to see this this what turned into something very magical as we got into it, just to, to how the whole thing comes together. One of the things I did want to make sure that I shared with with all the fans and all the blockheads is um, at, at the very end of the tour, we did sit down with uh, with Salt and Pepper and in Vogue and Rick Astley because we knew we were we were going to be looking to have some some additional footage. And I got a chance to sit down and ask them some questions about what their experience was like, which is also you know somewhat showcased in the documentary. And the one thing that they all said that I think the blockhead should know is just mm -hmm. how much it means to them to perform in front of in front of the blockheads, in front, of, in front of your fans, and how well received they feel, how how embraced they are, and how how the block you know, how, how the whole, you know, Black Nation just just puts their arms around every act. You you guys show the world that these acts are at people you respect. You know, we promoted this this concert as with legendary guests because I know that's how you feel about these artists that join you on tour and become part of this this evening of entertainment. And it was just so it was so nice to hear them really at the very end of the tour. You could hear how much they were going to miss it. But what being in front of these audiences means and being a part of this show. So. I, I know that they're not with us on the stream today, but I want to make sure that all the fans know that gratitude that exists for these other amazing parts of, of the family. Um, I want to yeah, want to piggyback on that, like because sure. you know, uh, number one, a lot of the times, you know that you know there's not diehards at the show or friends of ours that come, or um, the more casual fan, you know they're always taking in the audience. You know what I mean? It's really they are the sixth member, you know that night as well and um can you take me out to the group i don't want to do my big face like, yeah, don't be <laughs> you know, like oh boy i better uh um but um yeah um that's great to hear to hear because you know i know how proud we all it's a very specific thing how proud we are of our blockheads and you know personally you know, I get to do a lot of theater and, and um, I'm just, I'm, I, I know when blockheads come to see me in a show, how they're going to present themselves, how, what, what joy they're going to bring, you know, they're a sophisticated audience. They love to have a good time, but like they are, they're smart, they're fun, they're generous, they're compassionate, they're, um, you know, 
they're considerate. And, um, so yeah, I, I, I get that. And, um, it means a lot. It really is something that they have as a, you know, there, there is, there is saying they have. Yeah. Thank you. For... Yeah. It, it, it was, it was really, really nice well to said. hear. Um, one of the things that, you know, this, of course, the tour is based on is an actual mixtape. Uh, we've never talked about this, so I'm curious. Um, do you guys, obviously, we all grew up in the time of, of cassette tapes. Do you guys have any memories of making any any great mixtapes? Uh, I, I, one of the things that I love to do in a mixtape is I always like to kind of sneak in a song that I felt like maybe the person I was giving it to wouldn't know that represented, oh, look at that. Uh -huh. so did, you guys, did you guys ever have that go-to song that you felt was sort of like, you know, a song that might be a surprise or not that everyone everyone knew, but that that represented your musical taste. I got, I got one right here. Yeah, what, what's uh, what's on that mixtape? It's the demo. Oh. Please don't go, girl. But I digress. Um, yeah, he played that for me the other day. By the way, over yeah. the phone, he held up the phone to a cassette player. It was so wow. great. So amazing. It's wow. Crazy. And by the way, it was it was it was recorded over a phone message tape. Nice. And on top of the messages was ILD, like a night of ILD, a W I L D in Boston, and then uh, and it still sounds amazing. Um, what I would think it sounds corny, but like I never say the band's name right, but that song "Come On Eileen," you know what I mean? Like that's uh, Dixie's Midnight Runners. What? What? De Dexy's Midnight Runners. There you go. You know, mm. that, that it, it really is, when you listen to a mixtape, uh, it's like when I listen to, you know, 80s on 8 on, on Sirius XM or something, you know what I mean? You get you get all giddy. It's like your music, and it is kind of funny that, you know, you don't, you don't connect that, like, our music has that same, you know, power for other people, but... Um, yeah, Madonna. I'd probably have to have a lot of Madonna on that on that mixtape as well. Mine were all yeah. hip hop. <laughs> Run DMC, Planet Patrol. Maybe throw in some new edition, new yeah. shoes. New shoes would be a curveball. Uh, I, know, like, do, do, do. I know when we would go to clubs and stuff, we would be listening to hip hop the whole way. But then, like, if Rocky Amadeus came on or New Shoes, I Can't Wait, like certain songs like that, like big pop records that had like a little bit of zip to them, we would always sort of throw them in the mix. Mm -hmm. I know, Danny, Danny, th this is sort of off the beaten path, but Steve Winwood, I remember you used to like that song, Higher Love. Yeah, oh, that, was that, was jam. Jam. that was your jam. That was your jam. I remember. It's yeah. a great record. You guys ever ever tape over a tape you bought in the record store by putting scotch tape over the top of it? That's cold, but that was a hack, you know. I taped so, over my brother's absolutely. tapes that they bought in the record store. <laughs> they weren't happy about it. Um, well, believe it or not, you know, we, we've almost reached the time to wrap this up and, and premiere this amazing concert film. I just want to just make sure that everyone understands how the Veeps platform works for, for those that haven't bought in yet. Um, you should, if you haven't bought, you should go ahead and buy now and join us because some of the guys are going to be sticking around and there's a chat feature and you'll be watching the film with us together in real time. Once you've bought it, you have 10 days to watch it as many times as you want, which we hope you'll do. And, and then also the way the documentary works is like a like bonus content on, an, on a movie you might buy. You'll click on that and watch it separately at your own time. Mm. Um, and then if you are not able to watch today, don't worry. The, the, the pay-per-view is going to be available for, for 30 days. So you can come back and watch it at another time if today you've got stuff going with your family or, or you're just learning about this or seeing this stream and it's not it's not today um so go ahead and watch it and we're just really really excited to show it to you well, just you know as, as we wrap up here like i said it's it's going to be a great year celebrating amazing things and we the guys have been really talking for for a long time that we knew this year was going to be a year where just um not, no spoilers here but just to confirm the new kids are not going on a full tour this year um yeah. and yet yeah i know but we are going to be planning some really amazing things will be announced soon of ways we can all be together 
the really? Houston rodeo. The Houston rodeo has been announced. Oh, uh, hey, March the seventh, yeah. and there are, there are there are other events coming up where we can celebrate this amazing year of what it means of you know 15 years of the band being back together and, and just going so strong with this shared love and this today is, is really the first thing and then of course i hope we get to see you know some of the fans this week for some amazing special joe shows we'll see you wednesday in connecticut and saturday at carnegie Ooh. hall very exciting so it's it's a busy and exciting week in 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 block nation oh, joe. kicking it um, off for us oh, guys joe. that's right, that's right. Kicking it off. um hey shout out to you know veeps and you know the editor it's not easy to capture this show and and you know and capture how special the night is in person i think they did a fantastic job i know donnie did a lot of work but they were just easy to work with the editor and and shout out to kevin colefield for for mixing it and it sounds i think it sounds great it looks great and and it does do a great job of capturing how special you know a tour uh we we all share together and Carrie Henderson worked uh, very well with us on putting the documentary right. together, and Pat Anthony, who also shot the footage, and just so many. And you and you touched on it. We actually, you know, it, you know, it's something you guys will get to see again. But I, I know that you guys have said it out there. But before we wrap it up, I think it goes without saying that there'd be no mixtape tour if it wasn't for uh, these amazing guest artists who who were a part of this evening. Your amazing crew it was a very challenging time to put up a tour. We we did have our own setbacks, and everyone came together, pushed together, you know, from the top down for the new kids and the love they 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 showed their crew and their and their guest artists. So uh, it's just exciting to watch it back. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say goodbye and we're gonna give everyone a little bit of time just to you know take a break, get a snack. It's time to go to the movies with the new kids on the block. So uh, we'll see you guys in in the live stream of the mixtape tour in just a few minutes. Blockheads, love you. Love you guys. Let's Bye, go. Guys.